So we're going to try Guy back. Um, thanks, Ivana, for talking mm -hmm. with us a little bit more. And we might talk with you some more. Hey, Guy. I can hear you, and everything sounds okay. You can hear me, all right. Yeah. Hey, everyone, thanks for hanging around through all of our uh, technical difficulties here. Yeah, Mercury um, must be in retrograde. Oh, is that uh, Ivana's work there? That grenade? Yes, that, that, that was. It's uh, pretty amazing stuff. Hey there, I've seen a little bit of your work. Um, really, really stunning. Can you hear him? Oh, a little bit, thank you. <laughs> so, Guy, what's new? Oh, gosh, what's new? Um, well, on the, the home front, uh, we're working on growing tomatoes. But uh, <laughs> as far as uh, everything else uh, at uh, uh, Tattoo Education, we, we're rolling out a bunch of new stuff. Um, over this, this past week and this coming week, uh, a few different books and DVDs. And I've been preparing for this uh, seminar coming up in Boston. Um, so that's, that's been the professional end of things. Uh, just got over a really uh, challenging couple of days of tattooing yesterday and the day before. A piece that uh, I kind of took on as a deliberate challenge. I'm sorry I haven't had a chance to send you photos of it. Um, what it, how lar how large of a piece? It was a half sleeve. Um, it was the complexity of it that, that really uh, uh, kind of threw me. Um, I don't know if this will show very well on the camera. Um, you know, one of these light form kind of oh, yeah. thingies with uh, atmospherics and organic stuff and... Uh, that kind of thing. Oh man! But you know, just a lot of really delicate tolerances there. You know, trying to to go for this um, very careful balance between being bold and strong enough, uh, but also being the soft and atmospheric piece. And then on the inside, now this might really not show up on the camera, but uh, this is a kind of lunar Mandela oh, yeah. kind of thing. It totally shows put up together uh, with this this eye. Kind of superimposed over it, and yeah, and, and here imagine a bunch of kind of geometric stuff around the outside of it, and uh, a starry night sky behind that. So you know we're we're laying three different effects over each other. You've got the starry night sky, you've got this uh, geometric mandala thing going around it, and you've got this uh, uh, eye superimposed over it. So. Um, yeah, that was that was kind of micro anal sort of stuff, but I, I really enjoyed doing it. Um, I can't wait to see somebody's first tattoo. First tattoo? Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, somebody's first tattoo. I'm really sorry. You know, maybe I should just text this to you right now as we're talking. Let's see if I can do this without disrupting our conversation and uh, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, um, I, we've we've got a we're gonna talk. We've about. got a few questions in from the chat room. Um, if you, okay, uh, let's hear those questions. All right, cool. Um, someone wants to know, um, with copying being the uh, sincerest form of flattery, how, how do you feel about so many people, uh, they use the term knocking off your style, but uh, being influenced by your work? Oh, um, I think it depends on how much they try to push it in their own direction. I think that's really the important thing uh, with all of it. It's... Uh, uh, a matter of originality, and I think what I'm doing is is not um, my own thing. Biomech was around before me. I've got my own spin on it. H.R. Uh, Giger, obviously, he was sort of the uh, originator of a lot of this stuff. He's uh, definitely got his own look that that uh, all of us sort of uh, ganked on a little bit. Um, yeah, that piece there, that's something that I did with Don McDonald, a collaborative piece. Um, and uh, Don is influenced by both me and by uh, Aaron Kane. Uh, and Aaron and I kind of are are two different, distinct points in the abstract tattoo spectrum. Um, but there's a whole lot of this, uh, you know, range of of style to still be explored that nobody's done yet. And uh, a lot of artists who are really pushing the limits right now with it are uh, kind of touching on some, uh, you know, territory that I wouldn't have thought to or that Aaron King wouldn't have thought to, to do uh, anything with. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that as long as people are taking it in their own direction, uh, 
enough, you know, if, as long as they're putting enough uh, originality into it, then I'm all for it, you know. I mean, uh, I don't own this style. I don't. Uh, I don't want people to think that it's a style that's closed off because there's a couple of people doing it already, you know. I mean, it's kind of like Japanese tattooing. You can, um, you know, do it a million different ways. I mean, every artist that, that does a good job with Japanese tattooing has their own look with it. But it's kind of this accepted set of, of motifs and elements that, you know, need to be put together in a way that flows nicely and looks good on the body. Uh, and, you know, Biomech has the potential to have that sort of universal kind of applicability, you know, where uh, any artist could sit down with it and do their thing with it. Um, so, you know, right now there's kind of this, uh, this challenge, I guess, to um, break through this perception of um, tattoo, uh, of biomech tattooing belonging to a couple of particular artists, most notably myself and Aaron King. Uh, so I would really personally love to see that perception change radically, and then we would see the range of biomech style out there change radically. I think it would, uh, it would be a kind of a abstract tattoo renaissance. Uh, but first, we have to get over this perception that it's a style that belongs to particular artists because it, it isn't. You know, of course, my style of biomech belongs to me. And um, please don't rip it off. Don't mind. <laughs> That's a very clear point. I think I think that made your point. Uh, 